Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Now I've been getting a lot of requests just recently for people requiring help with their machines because the machines are not doing the expected thing when they turn them on. The head is moving in strange positions and they can't get the machine to actually start working. Well, there is a very good reason for that and I think we ought to start right at the beginning. Now your controller might be slightly different than this, but all Rowida controllers are approximately the same. If we take a look down the centre here, we shall see that there are a couple of legends which define what these LEDs are down this edge here. Now two of these four LEDs will come on, depending on how your machine is set up. It will either be one and three or two and four. These are sensing when the head moves and detects the X or the Y switch. So once those two switches have been sensed, you will see that they disappear. And instead what will happen is, something that alarms a lot of people is, we've got a flashing 14. Well, 14 basically means that yes, I've got my zero and everything is okay, ready to run. So don't worry about the flashing 14 because it's a good sign, not a bad sign. So let's turn the machine on and you'll see what I mean. So the head is now moving, it's detected Y and now it's going to detect X. And now it's happy. The red LED at the bottom here is always going to be on because that's the power to this unit. So number nine is an important one to note because if you've got a flow meter in your system, the red light should be on to tell you that you're okay to run the laser. That's as much information as you need to know about what goes on inside your controller. Okay, now in this machine, obviously zero is set in this corner here because there's my X sensor and my Y sensor is over the other side there. Both switches work exactly the same way. On this machine, you can't actually see the LED, but there is an LED on this switch. And if I put this over the sensor, you'll probably just be able to see that the LED is switching on and off, which means the switch is working perfectly okay. So that's what you need to know about the switch itself. So you can very quickly test whether your switch is actually working. If we press reset, the first thing that happens is the head will travel towards the switch. Now because this machine is working okay, I've got to just slightly confuse the switches so that you can see what actually happens because there are two things happening at once here and I want to separate them out so that you can see what's going on. So the head comes in and the switch is coming in quite fast and it detects the switch is on and then it moves the head backwards until it just switches off. And when it switches off, it then comes in very, very slowly to make the switch again. And then it waits for Y or X, whichever of the two switches is waiting, and then it will go off. And as it goes off, it detects the second off position. And that is when it sets zero for this axis. Now, the two axes are working together, so both X and Y will jiggle. So it's on, off, on, off makes zero. We can watch that happening on the keyboard when I press reset. So it sets to zero there. Okay, and then it drives to the last origin position. So we're going to do a reset, and I'm going to fool the x-axis this time. Now. Now. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> now, depending on where I had my head set in the middle of the machine here, it possibly might have tried to drive over there because let's go and have a look at the keyboard now. I will press the left hand arrow key.
and X has now gone to zero. So I fooled this switch into thinking that the head was here at zero, but in fact the head stopped here. So when it, when it now says, okay, I've got zero, now drive to the last origin position, the last origin position from there should have been about here. But because it's here, it's now gonna go over here. So what's the problem when this goes wrong? You can get all sorts of strange problems that don't necessarily make you think that this switch has gone wrong. Now it looks as though your x-axis has lost its way and it's crashed into the side or something like that. It's after about 25 or 30 seconds, if it can't find a zero position, it automatically just says, okay, I'll call that zero and off it then goes. So it'll create its own zero if it can't find one. And of course that could be anywhere on the machine and then your machine will crash into one of the axis stops. Now it will generally always be the X axis that goes wrong, not the Y axis. Why is that? Well, it's all to do with these things. The problem is what's inside there, here's a thick version, it's a piece of copper, which as you can see is actually very easy to bend. Just at that point there, I've purposely left the insulation on here so that I can demonstrate this to you. Look, when I bend this, it bends just there. Now when I bend it, you'll notice it's not bending at the same place every time now. Look, it's bending right out here because this wire here is softer than this wire here. One of the problems with bending copper is it reorganizes all the molecules and atoms inside there so that they pack tighter and tighter and tighter and the actual metal becomes harder. And if it becomes harder, then after a period of time, as you flex the copper like this, and you can see it takes quite a long time, but that will happen. And if you could see the copper in there, you would see that it's got a sort of a white appearance, it's crystalline. Flexing copper wire is a bad idea. But, of course, this axis here, the Y axis and the X axis are moving. The good news is that the axis that you use the most for engraving, which is this X axis, and you think, wow, okay, look at all these electrical wires in here. Yes, if you've got a, um, a red LED sensor, or if you've got autofocus on here, you'll have electrical wires which are flexing continuously because you are scanning. That's bad news. Now, although this switch here is not moving and the wire to it is not in this X axis chain, the wire to this is actually getting back to the Rueda controller via this Y axis chain down here. This flexes a lot less than this one does because you don't spend time scanning in this y-axis. You're normally doing fairly gentle moves in this axis. And if we take a look here, you'll see that it has normally got quite a big loop on it. It's not as heavily stressed as this one. It's a problem in the y-axis that's causing an x-axis sensing problem because this is where your cable will break. And it's always a break in this cable which causes this switch to malfunction. The switch itself will probably still work. At a certain position of the head this cable will flex and the two pieces of cable inside there will actually just pull apart. And if they pull apart or close, which, whichever it happens to be, they might be apart and then they actually close. And they will close during the sensing cycle for zero. The only time these switches are ever used as during this startup procedure where we're trying to find zero zero for the table coordinates. At any other time it doesn't matter whether they're working or not. But what will happen is this head for example may be part way across here and there will be a break in this cable here which will all of a sudden come together and as it comes together it will do this. The y-axis is moving Oh, look, it's gradually creeping on. It may or may not make it. 
Will it? Won't it? Will it make it? No, it didn't make it. So what it's now done, if I press this zero button, you'll see that it's now set zero there. It hasn't made it to the switch. And if we look on the keyboard, it will call that zero. It's the make and the break in here, which is doing the same job as this piece of metal. And that's why you can get funny things happening because the switching is taking place in the cable by, by virtue of the wire in there touching or not touching depending on how the cable is being flexed. So it's totally out of your control. So here's what you need to go and look for. One of the more popular makes is Fotec. They're all very similar, but the important thing is that it's an NPN, as it says in here. It's an NPN switch, which is normally open. And this is the number that you'll normally find. Here's another alternative make, and you'll see that it's got an N after it, for an NPN switch. Okay, so this is another manufacturer of the same sort of switch. They're all designed to exactly the same standard, so they're all interchangeable. And as you can see from here, they're not expensive. Now, it could take a week or so to get your new switch. Okay, so your machine is not out of action while you're waiting for a new switch. Because here's what you do. Now with the machine off, We've got two possibilities. Because we're going to push the head right to the back of the stroke and fully to the, onto the switch, it's very possible that our cable here may well be making a correct connection. And when we turn the machine on, it may go through the proper startup procedure. May do. Now, I know my machine will. But if it doesn't, then what you need to do is have a little sweat, a little piece of metal here, and as soon as you see it moving off, put a double switch action on it. Okay, so as soon as you see that head move, you go click, click, and it will set zero for you. And we can see how close it is to zero by driving the head back and seeing where it stops. It set zero in totally the wrong position, but it will not reset zero again until you start the machine up. At the moment, the machine thinks that is zero, and we can see clearly that it is not zero. So what we're going to do, we can push this into what should be a nominal zero position. If we drive the head off of zero, and then we drive it back onto zero, there we go, look at the keyboard and it will say zero. And you can see physically here, it's zero. So now you've got your machine back in working order until you turn it off. And then you've got to go through this same, same cheat mechanism again. Almost certainly, you're gonna to have to pull, take that wire all the way back to the controller. And you've got to get it through this chain. So with a screwdriver, you will be able to prise the chain apart here to break the link, okay? And that means you can then pull the cable halfway and then pull it the other half so that you don't have to pull it round a corner. You'll be able to pull it through here and, and then take it through the second half. It just makes the operation of changing the cable easier and then you can snap the chain back together again. Okay, well I hope that takes the fear away from that horrible moment when you turn your machine on and it doesn't do what you expect it to do. You will now be fairly confident that you know how to tackle the various problems. You're not in the poo. You can carry on using your machine while you order one of these. Or, knowing that these are one of the most vulnerable parts of the machine, maybe you ought to have one of these in stock now for a very, very, very small investment it will save you a lot of heartache in the future. Well, thanks for your time again, and I'll see you in the next session. Bye for now.